Man, this ain't no road. <laughs> Wild chickens in Oregon, yeah. Hello everyone, it's Oregon Motorcycle back with another episode. And uh, we're starting our day off here in Oregon City. And I've got a KTM 1290 Adventure behind me in tow. Uh, Tobbs, he's got a little YouTube channel you guys can check out. I'll put the link down in the description below. It's called Hobbs Garage. Uh, he's actually an adventure rider here in Oregon City too. And I met him on the Discord server. And he actually made a little cameo in my last video but so we had a little mishap on that video and so I didn't get to ride with him on the last outing but anyways we are headed up to D flats OHV area and we're gonna attempt we're gonna attempt to cross over um, into Ripplebrook from the OHV area and I've tried it twice already this year and failed both times but um, we're gonna do it today we're gonna do it today. So I've got, uh, we both got a couple tools for down trees. I got a shovel I'm gonna show you guys that I got with me and um, all that good stuff. So it should be a fun and exciting day. So you guys can kick back, get ready. Um, so if you guys are new to the channel, it's your first time watching, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'm trying to get to 3000 subscribers by the end of this year. And uh, you guys can all help me do that just by clicking that subscribe button down there. And if you guys are liking my videos and all that good stuff, hit that thumbs up. One thing I'm going to try different in this video you guys may be seeing right now is uh, I'm going to put like a three-dimensional map so you guys can see exactly where we're at and what we're doing. And uh, so it should be pretty cool if you guys are checking it out right now. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'll check back with you guys at the OHV area because we're going to stop and we're going to air the tires down. And uh, so I'll see you guys at D Flats. entrance right here D flats of course we're hitting a little bit of rain wouldn't be a I mean even the forecast today was like yeah you know partly cloudy but no rain and maybe some clouds this afternoon but and then you know I, I guess it wouldn't be a ride in Oregon if it wasn't raining so it's all good it's all good let's get up here and see what kind of trouble we can get into so we've had rain for the past couple days I got a feeling everything's gonna be wet muddy and slick up here but I'll just add more fun to it getting ready to hit the dirt right here. I'm going to stop and air these tires down. All right, got the tire pressure dropped down. And it is going to be wet up here. So I put, I'm um, going a little bit lower this time. And uh, actually I was right on the street right there with really low pressure, but um, I went down to 15 in the front and 18 in the back we'll see how that does us for the day it's really as low as i want to go with cast wheels because some of these potholes here are treacherous so um they sneak up on you so i'd hate to hit a pothole going 30 miles an hour and dip my wheel or break it or something so but yeah this is pretty much hard packed gravel it should be this way for the for the most of the trip but like I said, we're going to get up into some of the higher parts and there's still there's going to be snow. At least there should be. 
Although we did have a nice little hot streak from the last time I was up here. But I was up here a couple weeks ago and it was I couldn't cross because of snow. But today we come prepared. We come prepared with a shovel. <laughs> See if we can't dig through and get all the way through. So. Here's the staging area. Not many people here today on a Friday, but uh, honestly, I think people are starting to get back to work. I've been noticing a lot more traffic lately around the Portland metro area. And today, today is the day, uh, today's the 15th, okay, of May. So um, this is when we start reopening Oregon. Um, so the governor announced yesterday, the day before, that today all retail stores can open. And all but three or four counties in Oregon can totally reopen. So I think if you go down south, get away from the Portland metropolitan area, I think you can start finding some restaurants and bars open as of today, I think. I think that's what I heard. And they're gonna keep the, the counties like Clackamas and uh, Multnomah, Washington County and that kind of stuff. Um, oops. They're gonna keep those closed uh, for the time being. Um, so I just, I'm curious how that's gonna affect the, the campgrounds because the campgrounds are still, still all closed. But right now we're in an OHV park, but we're gonna be getting out of this park and we're gonna be getting into um, the Mount Hood National Forest. Anyways, things are wet and soggy and slick. I can tell you that. Um, you know, I just did a review on these tires for wet pavement. These, these tires are horrible on the wet pavement. The Shinko 705s. But this is an area where they somewhat excel. Would be on, the, on these gravel roads. And with them aired down like this, uh, they're, they're pretty, pretty good pretty good now when it gets kind of slick and muddy a little bit I can I can feel it washing around a little bit but nothing like it would be with the stock tires and, and then with this low pressure I'm running right now I got I got pretty decent traction right now am I going the right way um, I have to check my map I gotta open my map I don't know if we're supposed to go that way or this way I forget I thought I was gonna be able to get to the spot I was at last time without no map but yeah I think we got to turn there come on you stupid thing bugging out on me yeah we got to turn around we'll uh, go up that other road and I'm gonna stop again try to set a point that way I can just kind of follow the map So I got a pin dropped on the map here. Hopefully we can just kind of follow this a little bit. It's going to take us probably to the next major intersection and we'll see. So uh, if you didn't hear Hobbs there, he just said there's a 10 degree difference from where we're at right now versus where we started in Oregon City. So it's getting, it's getting chillier up here. Uh, felt something bottom out there. <laughs> it was either the... <laughs> It was either the wheel on the rim or is the or the tire on the wheel or it was the forks but something bottomed out there and that's what i was saying earlier man these potholes they just come up and sneak up on you and some of them are deep Bend my front wheel. 
felt it bottom out again there. Might be a little too low pressure <laughs> for some of these poles. Guess we could slow down a little bit. Loving it. Woo! Man, I love this bike. This is my best motorcycle ever. I mean, no questions asked, period, hands down. Um, just everything about it. From starting with the price that it costs, um, the on-road performance that it gives me, um, the fuel mileage, the versatility, versatility. I mean, look, I'm able to come up here and do this. You know, um, and ride roads like this comfortably. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could take a R6 up here, okay, with, with super courses, but you wouldn't be having as much fun as, as I'm having here. But, you know, again, going back to the versatility of this bike, I mean, it's, it's awesome for, you know, $7,000 bike that does all this with that Honda reliability and it's doing it on you know low grade fuel you know we're probably getting 70 miles to the gallon right now running at this kind of speed so say leaving yeah the OHV area so now we are out of the OHV area and I think technically now we might be in the Mount Hood National Forest got the heated grips on it's feeling good because it's getting cold <laughs> I should have brought my uh woohoo yeah oh <laughs> yeah I should have brought my uh my thermal lining for my jacket. Oh, I just got water in my boots. Sweet! So I've been looking at new boots too. I almost pulled the trigger last night. I'm gonna go with the 99% sure I'm gonna go with the Forma, Forma Adventure waterproof boots. I really like the way those boots are looking and people seem to like them. The soles look pretty beefy on them and they're waterproof. I gotta have waterproof boots. I'm tired of coming home with wet feet. Trail's getting smaller and smaller. It's misting a little bit too. So we're about to get to my drop pin location already. I'll have to redo the map. I'm using Google Maps and I, I downloaded all this area so it's, you know, so it uses the GPS signal and then it'll put you on the map, which is it's working pretty good. Um, I don't have any complaints yet. They're gonna get a little technical on us, huh? This is probably some of the more technical stuff I've been on. I actually thought this was gonna be an easier ride than, than what we did on, uh, should've just went for it. Yeah. Gonna be needing a skid plate. <laughs> So here's where this super low first gear is gonna come in handy. As long as I don't slide off into any ruts, I'll be good. Oh. 
Oh, we just passed. Okay, so it says that we pass it. Get up here in a minute and check the map. Good stuff back in here. Good riding. Somebody had a fire here. kind of feel the the bike wanting to slide down into the rut a little bit but I think as long as you keep your momentum it's all good for the most part yeah this is a good trail so you can see the down trees that people have already cut and cleared the path so which is good Maybe that looks like a fresh cut too, so maybe somebody's already made this trail all the way through. I, I'm not, I don't know. Which will mean less work for us. Got some rock action here, huh? I might need to get a skid plate for the crash bars. <laughs> I've got my next purchase is, well, besides the boots, I don't know. It's, kind of going back and forth on the boots and the crash bars but I'm gonna get the crash bars before the skid plate that's the plan anyways and I think I'm gonna go with the SRC um, well for sure I'm going with the SRC skid plate because it's the only one I know of that's compatible with the center stand that I got so there's some snow so I want to check here a good trail oh, yeah. speaking of snow First little snow crossing. Piece of cake, piece of cake. All right, here we go. There's a little bit of... I'm gonna have to back up and get back over to get on this side. Cause it's too deep, it's too deep on this side. There you go. <laughs> Alright, come on. There we go. All right, see what we can do here. <sighs> nice and easy. Says we're going 17 miles an hour, but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> All right. Oh, I should have kept more momentum there. As soon as you touch down on the gravel road, it not get you nice and forward. There we go. A 
ABS lights flashing, probably confusing it. Alright guys, so it looks like we hit the end of the road. We have been traversing through some of the snow and it looks like we have just gotten a little too far. Let me show you guys what we're dealing with here. I took my drone up and went down and got an aerial view and it just looks like it's too much. So like I said, we're this is May 15th, we're right in the middle of May. And as you can see, this is just not passable on our adventure bikes. So I took my handy shovel here. This, this shovel is pretty awesome. It's got a bunch of tools on it. It's got a glass breaker and a knife in it. And it's, uh, it's a pick and a shovel and it works awesome. And right here, I did a little bit of picking just to see what it was like. But it's like ice down in there. Um, so if you guys are interested in the shovel, it folds up. It's got a nice little pouch I'll show you right now. This is listed down below in my Amazon links. If you guys are interested, it's only like 30 bucks. And... Uh, it's awesome, it breaks down. I'm gonna show you guys right now how it breaks down. But yeah, this looks like the end of the road. We're gonna flip our bikes around and cruise on back out and see if we can get into some to some more trouble down there. But yeah, as you can see, it's a, it's a pick. It works really good, actually. But I'm not picking all the way up that just to get around another corner and it'd be more. It's just too much right now, this time of year, so. Fail again. This is the third fail on this trail. I will make it. I will make it this year. I will. All right, so we start our journey back down. It's a little easier going down. <laughs> Whew, bikes sliding everywhere. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Woohoo! Slip and slide, slip and slide. At least there's a rut to keep you keep you good to go. So hopefully my ABS light goes off. Um, it came on, it was flashing at me back there when I was peeling out and stuff, but it should go off. My ABS light's still stuck on. You could leave for a while. What I'd say is, uh, probably when you get home, plug your battery for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, mine's freaking out though, too. I might have some crap in there. I don't know. Might be some snow built up in there or something. I don't know. So, it's the first issue I've had with the Honda. Almost 5,500 miles on it. So yeah, it's just beautiful up here. It's awesome. If you guys ever get a chance to ride up in here, I highly suggest it. Oh, there it goes. It went off now. All right, we're good. So you can't, you can't have problems with a Honda. They just, they don't have problems. They're, let's call them Mr. Reliable. Good old faithful. The tank. So there's some right back there where we were uh where we couldn't go any further there's a good camping spot there it's actually a little camping spot here but doesn't look that good actually some cool rocks up there um but yeah there's definitely some good dispersed camping up here in this area i might be back up here camp up here check it out it's really really quiet up here nice and peaceful and there's some good trail riding, as you can see. Good trail riding. Man, I wish we could have made it through. I'm trying to catch up with Hobbs here so I can get some better footage for you guys. I'm gonna have him lead the way out so you guys can see him ride instead of just seeing a trail. Yeah, the, that's the only complaint I have about my backpack here is it's hard to lean back when I'm standing up. 
with that backpack. It's like right up my butt. It is what it is though. I mean, I got 60, over 60 liters of storage on the back for 40 bucks, so. Comes with the territory. Yeah, these tires are doing really good off-road with the low tire pressure. But, uh, so I got some, uh, more goodies. I'll stay here. Coming for the bike. Um, I was talking about the crash bars and skid plate earlier, but those aren't ordered yet. But um, what I do have coming next week, which is already ordered, just that reminds me, those guys charged me twice. I don't know why they charged me twice, but um, I have levers. I got shorty levers coming. Adjustable. Shoot, I should have went to first. Um, so those should be arriving early next week. So I'll, I'll do an install video on those and give you my thoughts. Um, I believe they're MZS brand. It's an Amazon brand. Um, but I've had them on my last two bikes. So this will be the third bike I've put them on in the last year or so. And um, they work really good. Real good. Just mobbing through on that KTM 1290 Adventure. It's a nice bike he has. It's all suited up with the good luggage. And it's got some awesome crash bars on it. A little different route than the KTM. Changing it up a little bit. My feet are a little cold. Dang it, I need boots. Getting off in that snow and playing around that snow. Got my feet wet and cold. Oh well, it's gonna get warmer the further we get down. That was a lot better coming down than going up. Yeah, a lot easier too. Yeah. So it looks like we can take a different way back. There looks like there's a road that we can take off and and stay on the dirt and completely pass the OHV area and then get back onto the highway near Estacada. You wanna try that? Okay. All right, so we're gonna take a different way out of here, hopefully. <laughs> um, and it's gonna go up and around and it's going to go around the, the OHV area and then it's going to dump us out somewhere in Estacada. So this ought to be fun. Get to explore some new territory and stay on the trails longer. Oops. <laughs> All right, so here. Yeah, running a good little clip. So this is where we go here. Yeah, I guess. All right, new territory. Oh, I got some people camping here. Here you go, there's a little dispersed camping. Boy, they're over the guardrail and everything, crazy. So we're gonna make a right up here, looks like. Ooh. Showed another road there on the map, but I didn't see any other road. I guess this is our left-hand turn. Oh, I thought that was a wild apple tree. It's too early in the season for there to be apples anyways. That's that's like one of my favorite things in, in Oregon is 
when you're out messing around and you come across wild fruit. Oh man, the apples are awesome here. You're out in the woods or whatever, or out fishing, and you come across an apple tree. Woo! It's time to stop and have a snack. And of course, we got blackberries up here, every, like growing like mad. Another one of my favorite uh, dishes, especially around this time of year, is spring Chinook salmon and wild berries. Oh, that's so good. Pavement? What's this? A lot of tree damage during the winter time here. Lots of fallen trees. No target shooting. trees there. I mean, there's just all kinds of little roads that go off to the side here. Or it looks like we got some uh, some epic views here. Picture time! Alright, epic views here. We're gonna turn around right here. We're actually gonna go back around. I just look at the map. It looks like we can drop down in there and hit some of these dirt roads here. So we get some more dirt action and then go out that way. So, nice. Let's see where this goes. I don't know if this is the right way. Map got a little funky. What the hell? Is that a chicken? No. What is that, a pheasant? A chicken. <laughs> That's, I was just saying, I was, I was, I'm filming right now. I'm like, is that a chicken? I think it was a pheasant or something, wasn't it? I know, it's freaking huge. <laughs> Wild chickens in Oregon, yeah. This is a huge group camp area here with a pretty good view um, oh my god look at all the shells dude nasty so we found this little place here we're gonna turn around here um, let's talk about doing some cleanup up here and now we're talking about that that bird if that was a chicken or not and uh, we're trying to figure out we're sitting here scratching our heads like what in the hell is a chicken doing back here like a wild chicken or something, I don't know. That's kind of funny. <laughs> nice. It is just so awesome up here. That's the road. That's why we missed it. Man, this ain't no road. Crazy ass Google Maps. Well, I guess it kind of is like kind of a road. No, man, we can't. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we can traverse this. This is crazy. <laughs> hey, it's kind of a road. <laughs> So that's hilarious. It shows on Google Maps that, that that's that's a road. So it's probably an old logging road back in the day. You can tell it's been planted maybe 10, 15 years ago or something. Um, that's just funny though. Like, But like actually back in there, that'd be a good secluded camp spot. Like really good. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. I'm just finding some good potential camp spots. And it's, it's just, it's really, it's just right out in there. You can see the clear cut there. But we're still, we're gonna try to drop down in there. I think we can get down in there. Um, just go past that lookout point that we were just at. Drop down in. Oh, and of course the gate's closed.
No trespassing. Technically, this is National Forest right here, but it looks like the borderline is like 50 yards past this road. So you see where the trees start? Yeah. So according to my map, that's the boundary. And look, right here, right, that tree line and back around this, we're, this is the National Forest. Past that tree line and past that planted stuff, that's not, according to my map. So, so we're not going down there. That's locked up, private property. So we're gonna head on down. We just stopped and uh, got my tires aired back up. I think it's gonna be slab the rest of the way. This was an awesome day, awesome ride. Got to explore some, some cool territories. Still exploring new stuff because I've never been on this road before. But this road is going to take us out. Um, back out to the main highway eventually. But we got a couple miles to go and we're going to cross this river. There's a river running down there called Fall, Fall River, I guess. Something like that. So, But yeah, we found a lot of cool camping spots up here. A lot of cool trails. If you guys are liking this stuff, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed because you know I'm trying to hit 3,000 subscribers this year and I think I'm going to be able to do it. If you guys have any questions about the bike or any of my gear I'm running, just let me know. You can post down in the comments below and I try to answer all the questions. I try to reply to every comment that I can. Um, so if you guys are interested in the bike, I know a lot of you guys are interested in the bike so you watch the videos and that kind of thing. So yeah, basically this road is going to dump us out close to Estacada, back on 224, I believe it is. But you can see we're starting to get back into some civilization. What is this? People, people's houses, I guess. <laughs> That's what it is, so. Anyways, it's that time, guys. So until next time, Oregon Motorcycle.